Hi everyone and welcome back to The Shack, where today we're going to be doing a hopefully really quick and simple upgrade to this ZX Spectrum Plus, which has seen a raft of other upgrades and maintenance in previous videos. There are links on the screen if you want to pop back and watch those too. And if you have been following along, you'll know that in the last video I mentioned that one thing I wanted to do was to see if we could upgrade the keyboard, and I mentioned that I might have to design and build something. Well, someone beat me to it. Let's take a look. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding, PCBWay also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. The original Spectrum had a, shall we say, different approach to a keyboard, both in terms of look and feel and in terms of operation too. The look and feel came perhaps unkindly to be known as the dead flesh keyboard, with a spongy feel and no real tactile feedback. In terms of operation, you need dexterous fingers and a good memory if you're going to be doing any serious programming on the machine because the tokenized basic had to be entered in a tokenized way with different keys being able to perform up to five different things depending on what combination of keys you held down and in what sequence. It was a bit weird but we got used to it but the keyboard always felt a little off when all your mates were showing off their fantastic proper computers with proper keyboards like the C64, the Atari 800 and the BBC Micro. Several companies bought out aftermarket keyboards which, whilst they couldn't fix the tokenized entry, they could offer a nicer typing experience, like giving you a proper spacebar. These were often expensive and if you got one of these, you were both serious about your typing requirements and bolted to the Sinclair Spectrum because otherwise you'd have moved to a different machine. When the Spectrum Plus came out, it boasted a different keyboard, almost but not quite the same as the keyboard on the QL. They're annoyingly incompatible, and Sinclair branded it their professional keyboard. But it still wasn't very good, being based on a flimsy membrane and spongy rubber cones instead of proper springs, and no tactile feedback still. So what can we do about this? Well, I was going to design a PCB to allow me to build a Cherry MX compatible keyboard, and I might still investigate that, but only if this doesn't do the trick. This is a combined keyboard matrix and backplate for a Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus from a company called Ginger Electronics. Instead of the flimsy matrix, this replacement offers these little tactile switches, which promise a much more positive typing experience. It comes with these little washers and some mini PCBs to solder to the keyboard wires. The instructions say you don't need to do this and that you can just poke the wires into the Spectrum keyboard sockets, but you can't solder these on, it takes two minutes. Right, let's open up the Speccy and pop this in. Okay, so this Spectrum has a chunky and heavy metal backplate to the membrane. Other Spectrums have a thinner plastic backplate, and in the case of those plastic versions, you'd need to use those included plastic washers to get the exact correct height to operate correctly. 
Removing the existing keyboard is a simple matter of removing all of the screws on the back plate and the four screws holding the membrane ribbon cables in place, and then the whole thing just lifts out. And if this new PCB works well, we can hopefully pop all of that stuff in the spares bin to help revive another specy later. Now, the interesting thing about this new keyboard matrix is just how small these little tactile switches are. It's going to need to be either extremely well engineered or we're going to have to be very carefully positioning this as there's not much room for error with the little plunger on the bottom of the key having to hit this tiny switch dead on. The instructions don't fill me with confidence as there's a section here which basically says you'll have to fiddle with the alignment of this to get it to work. Well, let's pop it in and see how we get on just following the photos in the instructions as a guide. Okay, well that's in and I can definitely feel a nice click on each key press. Some of them are more distinct than others so maybe it's an alignment issue or maybe it's not so precisely engineered that every key gets a perfect hit. We'll pop the cables into the spectrum and boot up into our test ROM and do some keyboard diagnostics to make sure all the keys work. And they do, although some of them have a definite sweet spot and some work every time. This is never going to make you a touch typist because at the end of the day you're still physically interacting with the default and to be honest pretty rubbish Spectrum keyboard design. Anyway this may just be what you're looking for or you may want to pass it by. It's not massively cheap at 35 euros including shipping but then a new flimsy matrix can be over 20 euros anyway so I suppose if you need a new matrix you might want to give this a go. Right only a quick video this one as I'm still working on the next part of the Amstrad series and I'm waiting for new RAM to arrive. Thanks as always for watching and if you do get one of these keyboards let me know in the comments how you get on with it. If you like the video please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications of new content. Please leave your comments below as we always love to read them and if you've got anything you'd like to donate and see featured on the channel please drop us an email. If you'd like to support us there are links for Patreon and our Buy Us A Coffee page in the banner on the main channel page. So until next time in the Retro Shack, it's goodbye from me.